Aloha. It's April the 27th, 2022. It's Wednesday, 11 o'clock. That could mean only one thing. Time for What Now America? I'm Tim Apatel, your host, and today's title is Citizen Kane's newspaper is Musk's Twitter. Uh, you know, we have four major, someone's laughing, I hear them. Uh, we have four major social media companies. Um, Alphabet owns Google and YouTube. Meta owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Uh, ByteDance uh, owns TikTok and Twitter, which has 330 million active users. Uh, those are the four. So now we're going to have a proposed purchase. Oh, actually, it's not proposed. It's been approved by the board of directors for $44 billion that Elon Musk will be the sole proprietor of Twitter. Again, 330 million followers. That's more than the population of the United States. So to discuss that and the implications of his purchase, I have with me Jay Fidel and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Cynthia. Big news in Tinseltown, or in this case, Wall Street. Uh, Forty-four billion, not chicken feed. Uh, he's going to have to get a loan, and he's he's already mentioned that he's going to um, probably sell some shares of Tesla. Which, by the way, Tesla took a twelve point eight uh, loss yesterday out of fear that he's going to sell off his Tesla stock. So, Jay, the question is to you: uh, What's Elon Musk's agenda on this on this forty-four billion dollar uh, purchase? of um, 25% of all social media. What do you think is, what do you think is behind it? By the way, it's a leveraged buyout. He doesn't have to pay it all at once over time. Yeah. He could negotiate a smart business guy. You realize that he, um, he only got wealthy within the last 20 years. Uh, so that's, it's really extraordinary how much wealth he's developed. His first great transaction was PayPal. But that was, um, I, I say only, that was only in the hundreds of millions. <laughs> but from there on, it, it got to be billions. And he's done a, a fabulous job with Tesla, one of the biggest motor car companies in the world. Um, all within, what, 10 years, 15 years, max? So this is a smart guy. And um, spending $44 billion, it doesn't escape him. That's a lot of money. On the other hand, what, you know, what is a company like Twitter really worth? It's, it's not necessarily in the 320 million, million users. It's in the users that will be later. Okay? It's really popular. Um, and, it's, and you say 320 in a country of 330 or whatever we have. Well, actually, it's 330 million followers. So that's one for everybody in the country, but yeah. it's not limited to the country. Right. Uh, it's, it's the world. And so the influence that he is gaining by this purchase is, is global. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it, it may be worth more than $44 billion when he finishes with it. So the big question is, what does he have in his mind that justifies this price, that justifies this complete you know, change of direction for him? He hasn't been in media. Now he's in media. And now he's in one of the biggest, most influential media in the world. So I guess, uh, you know, I want to put myself in his, uh, in his shoes, in his head. Uh, why would he do this? Well, it's the influence, okay? It's global influence. Why would he do it? Because, because there's more to come with Twitter. And whatever Twitter is today, I guarantee you in six months or maybe three, it's going to look entirely different. You asked me before the show, you know, um, you know what, what, do we know uh, what, what he is going to do with it? And no, and he doesn't know either. Uh, but you just take, if you want to examine what he might do, you look into his head um, in his technology. I mean, after all, Tesla's a tech company. Um, and you try to figure out what you would do if you were smart like him um, to, build, um, to build on what Twitter is today. Okay, so whatever Twitter is today, multiply that by a huge multiple. He's going he's gonna to take out the bots. That's going to cost him a bit of money. He's going to use artificial intelligence. To do that, it's doable. He's going to try to take out the bullying. Okay, we already have network analysis. Uh, you know, black. Well, box. wait a minute. I, I question that. How do you know he's going to take out the bullying? I mean, his whole his whole spiel on this is: I want complete, unrestricted free speech. Uh, bullying would be part of his philosophy. I, 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 I would I suppose. I, I, we're we're at odds on that. I, I he's not going to do that because 
you know, this is another point. I mean, he doesn't want to invoke governmental action. He doesn't want to have regulation. He wants to get through this deal um, as a, you're right, he's going to own it by himself. He's, he's, he's going private with this company. Imagine a 44 billion, there's no other company like that in the world, a $44 billion company held essentially privately. He controls it all. He, no, no stockholders to worry about, right? Nobody can complain about it. Um, and I mean, nobody in the company, no directors to complain. If you don't like what he's doing, he'll fire you. But, you know, we, we differ on the notion of bullies because I don't think, yes, he wants to do First Amendment. He said that a number of times. And the press has responded by saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, you know, you can't, you can't, First Amendment is complicated. You can't just say that everything and anything that comes down the pike, you're going to put on here. You've already said you're not going to allow bots. Um, and implicitly, he's not going to allow bullying either. It's bad for business. Um, is he going to respect uh, certain Supreme Court decisions about limitations of free speech? Well, I, you know, I was telling you also before the show that I, that I think this is a test of the First, First Amendment. We have never had a test like this test is going to be. Um, we are going to see how strong it is or how weak it is. We are going to see, and this is a, a prediction I would make, whether the government, that is the administration, will step in and do something about you know, improper use of Twitter under um, you know, Elon Musk's uh, definition of First Amendment. I think the First Amendment is going to be redefined. Um, because you, as you mentioned, all these tech companies have so much influence through their media, their media subsidiaries that um, it, it's really it begs for governmental action. It begs for governmental control. On the other hand, you can't do what Putin does. You know, you've got to allow people to speak their minds in a in a free society in a democracy, but you can't have this kind of negative thing. You know, it tilts either way. You, you can have people who come. And um, you know, bully, uh, come and uh, you know, do uh, QAnon conspiracy theories. This is very bad, nasty. Um, so we don't want that, and we don't want to have that. And I don't think he wants to have that either. Right. Uh, well, not, you know, if you think about it, Jay. The last we, part, though, the last uh -huh. point is you don't want to go off the other side and limit, you know, uh, civil rights, uh, civil liberties, um, the notion of uh, you know speaking truth to power. So he's got to find a place in the middle. OK, thanks. Cynthia, um, one of the quotes from uh, Elon Musk was the following. It was a, tw a Twitter quote. Digital town square, when, where, where it matters, is vital to the future of humanity and where it's debated. Uh, this is a lot of the town square is a very powerful tool to have. And as Jay's mentioned, we don't have a whole lot of oversight. Government doesn't have a whole lot of oversight on it right now. Um, I think there was a test on the First Amendment rights when Donald Trump was prohibited and some of his cronies have been uh, kicked off of Twitter and Facebook for, you know, either inciting violence or out and out lies about COVID-19. So we have had some testing of that, but it was held by the CEOs or the uh, Facebook boards that uh, said this is out of play. Uh, does the government get involved if, if, if Elon Musk goes too far with uh, his quote unquote, fr uh, no restrictions on free speech? Okay, well, um, I think that this all started and I don't understand why I don't hear anybody talking about this. It all started when the SEC sued Musk in 2018, right? Because he put out a post on Twitter that was um, a false statement that increased his stock prices by i think it was 20 something million or maybe even more than that i'm sorry i don't remember the exact number but he made a huge profit on this false statement that he put on twitter so the sec sued him and it cost him 20 million in civil fines and to let and he had to let tesla lawyers vet all of his um uh Twitter posts. So, so here he is. He can't say what he wants to say. He can't manipulate people through Twitter. So he goes, well, I don't know how to get around this. I'll just buy Twitter. 
And I okay. would, you know, that's where it started. You know, and the title of the show is about Citizen Kane. And it was really, you know, Citizen Kane was a, one of the most popular movies ever, 1941. But it was really about Randolph Hearst and um, how he used the newspaper business to kind of settle scores with uh, current or former enemies and actually um, bend uh, political will uh, through the use of his newspapers. Right. Is, is this a grudge? Is this a grudge that Elon Musk has taken on because he was penalized and he's been criticized for how he's been union busting um, Tesla factory workers? Uh, is this a grudge? Is this the motivation in your opinion? I think so. He's already going after some of the Twitter uh, CEO, not CEOs, but some of the administrative people in, on Twitter. He's already publicly going out, kind of calling them out, disparaging their characters. Which is a breach of the agreement already that he, there was a, a, an agreement not to do these things. Exactly. He's already broken his agreements. <laughs> so is all of this just, as Jay is saying, some sort of test for, this, for the First Amendment? Some sort of you know free speech test. Is he trying to set up a situation where he doesn't actually end up owning Twitter, right? Doesn't go forty-four billion dollars in debt, but he changes the dialogue in such a way that he gets out of his SEC fines. Well, I think he's already had to pay those, but he can get out of this, um, uh, whatever it's this oversight that he has. He can't put anything on Twitter unless it gets vetted first. Well, he's already gone against that. So there's already a case now against him from the government because he violated the terms that he agreed to when in 2018. So, so there's a bunch of stuff going on under the scenes that involve way more than is Trump and his cronies going to get back on Twitter. I mean, yes, that's an important factor, but there's so much more. When I started to really look into all of this and I thought, when the world, it's so complicated and confusing and it almost looks like he's setting it up so it won't happen. Yeah. At least to me. Okay. Oh, I think he's, he's going to close on that. And, yeah. I, uh, and, I, and I think he's going to do things that nobody can imagine. But, but right. let's try to imagine one aspect of it. Let's say, that he really goes in you know, an open channel on this. Everything goes, except except the box. Everything goes. You can say whatever you want to say. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope he doesn't do Trump on it because that you know that would assure Trump of winning in twenty twenty four. It would assure he must love the possibility of going back on Twitter. He was oh, Trump said he would never do it, well, which said, is a lie. Oh. <laughs> he says he won't do it. He's going to stick with his whatever that one is. Well, that this is directly competitive with Trump's Twitter. Right. You know, and Trump's Twitter will fail because it's already failing. <laughs> so he, he would be, he, yeah, it's already, it's all over. Um, so he would want to come on this Twitter for sure. But let, let's assume for a moment he can. Let's assume that all the QAnons and the bullies um, and the conspiracy theories and all the crazy GOP people, of which there are many, uh, want to come on. Um, all the people who spread disinformation and misinformation. I mean, they're all over the place. And, and I've always been happy that Twitter locked some of them out. But if, if Elon Musk does not lock them out, if he reverses that, try you guys, Tim and Cynthia, try to imagine that world. We will have the inmates running the asylum. Okay, to my question. So if anything goes, does the government say, well, you know, cable news isn't uh, controlled directly by the FTC, but there are FTC guidelines on the damage to the public. Are you and, asking uh, whether me not... that question? Pardon? Are you asking me that question? I, I'm going to, yeah, I'm winding up to ask you this question. And that is, does the government get involved if, if things get out of hand? And how long does that take? Well, that's three questions. Yeah, I like okay. three questions. First, <laughs> the first question is, should the government get involved? And the answer, regrettably, although we all study, you know, the, the black and white aspect of, of the First Amendment in law school, and we've lived with it, you know, it's part of our national culture. Um, but the answer is yes, the government should get involved, because at that point, um, we will be at, we as a nation, as a world for that matter, will be a great risk of, of having the inmates running the asylum, having people spread disinformation and, and 
cultism, if you will. Okay, the second question is, will the government get involved? And, and that, that sort of depends on whether you have a functioning government. Uh, remember that, that whatever would happen in a completely open channel on this will affect the government. It will enhance the Republicans. And I never know what they're going to do, except I always assume it's the wrong thing, the wrong way Corrigan. You know, they're moving now in favor of Putin. You, know, you notice that it's happening? <laughs> Incredible. Um, are they going to be on the right side of this issue? Uh, if they win in this fall, they're going to control Congress? My goodness gracious. Um, so even if they should, and we all agree it's the right you know, public policy to do something to limit what, what Musk would organize, um, they, they may not do that. They may be either locked up or going the other way, saying, now all of a sudden we believe in the First Amendment and we, we want to speak, we want to do our disinformation, so don't stop us. You know, so they may not take any action. And the third question you asked was when? Um, well, you know, it reminds me of that the cartoon in The New Yorker where this guy's talking to somebody on the phone about a lunch date, and he, and he leans back in his chair, and he says, uh, how about never? Is never good for you? <laughs> <laughs> how about <laughs> never? <laughs> how about never? All right. Once again, you've thrown me off my task. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. <laughs> you know, Cynthia, uh, Twitter gets about 98% of its revenue from ads. Uh, Elon Musk has, as one of his uh, principles of buying Twitter is to have it ad free. Is this a business model that will sustain itself or will this become a lost leader for Elon Musk and he'll be funneling money into this thing till, uh, until he owns it, until he doesn't own it anymore? Well, I think he will be stuck funneling money into it if he, and I think he's going to lose millions of Twitter followers then, and millions of people that are on Twitter are going to leave. Why? Well, just because they don't like the idea of it, this whole, you can say whatever you want. You can bully people. You can, you know, give out false information. It doesn't matter. People are sick of that. Nobody really complained that much, except for the hardcore Trumpers. Nobody really complained when Trump was thrown off of Twitter. Most yeah. people were, I mean, the majority of people were celebrating the fact that he was off. And so I, I think he's going to run into that problem. Okay. Uh, can uh, I correction. add to that? Can I add to that? Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's like the Mel Brooks thing where he says, it's great to be, it's great to be king. Um, it's also great to be great. Uh, look, look at uh, what happened with Facebook. They were, you know, mighty criticized about so many things. It hasn't really affected them that much. Uh, and and some, would, uh, some would say that Facebook has uh, lost some steam in the marketplace, but I'm not so sure because people use them anyway. They're dependent on them in some funny way. Um, in, in Twitter, it's even more like that. I mean, people get wedded to it. They need it. They're standing on the street corner waiting for a bus. They got to have their Twitter. They got to have their fix. It's not only in, you know, in Hawaii, but everywhere in the country. Um, and it's everywhere in the world. It's connectivity. It's yeah. being part of the community. Um, how can you not? You must. And so I would say, even though there are threats right now, Cynthia, for sure there are, that people are going to leave. They don't, you know, they're anticipating what Elon Musk will do. They don't like it. Uh, when, when at the bottom line, they're going to stick to Twitter. And the, his numbers will grow. That's my prediction. And I'll bet you a pizza. No okay, more pizza bets. I'm pizza. done with those. I, wait, wait. I bet you a pizza, Jay, on this one. And that is that somebody else is going to start another one. And that's how it's going to totally undercut Twitter. Twitter will fall. I think it will fall. And, and I say the reason why is because somebody else is going to invent another one that's going to come out that's gonna take over where people don't have to worry about being on Twitter. They could be on this other thing. So you're, you're supporting the better mousetrap theory. Okay. Yes. Um, before I ask any more questions, I have to correct a number here. I said 98% of Twitter's revenue was derived from ads. It's actually 90%. So correction there. Uh, Jay, you know, Twitter is worldwide and Europe has just imposed a, a whole plethora of restrictions on social media. Uh, to what degree do they um, abide with uh, Elon Musk's uh, wish list of free and unrestricted uh, speech? 
really do they allow question. Twitter? Does, does Europe, the European, the EU allow Twitter to even function under that guideline? He's going to have to make peace with them. He wants to do his open channel. Um, he's going to have to, you know, make a deal, settle, pay them, you know, find terms that are somewhere in the middle that are acceptable on both sides. My reaction to it is good for the Europeans. They understand things and do things that for some reason we can't do here. In many ways, they have the moral high ground. This is the right thing to well, do, I, I, this sort of thing. Yes. And, 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 and actually, they're a good model for us to follow had we had a, if we had a government that could actually act. Yeah. And, you know, the big thing that Europe, Europe has uh, imposed as a restriction, there is no um, derogatory hits on race, origin, national origin, um, color, creed, all that stuff. Um, sex. I mean, basically, our Equal Rights Opportunity Act of the United States, they've imposed it for social media. And it seems to be, um, I think it'll work. So um, the question is was there. The question is whether it'll ever get adopted here. That's correct. That, that is it correct. Depends on who's in charge in Congress, right? <laughs> As to whether or not it goes forward, I think it it's sort of up in the air because we don't know if the Republicans are in charge. You know, if the Democrats well, there was a lot of synergy in in both the House, excuse me, House, Senate, and across both sides of the aisle that. Um, social media would be regulated in some fashion and form. Now, I, I don't know where those proposed legislations are. Uh, we haven't heard much about them, but um, allegedly they're still they're still kicking around. Mm -hmm. So do you think that actually because of this uh, pending sale, do you think that legislation actually gets going a little bit faster since there's bipartisanship uh, agreement on on some of these reforms? Cynthia? I think so. I hope so. Definitely hope so. And I don't see why not. And if they don't do it now, there's so many things that are needing to be done now before the election in 2022 here coming up in November. <laughs> it's a lot of things that need to get done before then. So who knows if it will actually happen, but hopefully it will. All right. When I say how about never, I'm, I'm saying it's way beyond the election. If okay. ever. We'll buy that. Uh, you know, speaking of social media, um, Kevin McCarthy is to switch to switch here. Uh, Kevin McCarthy is basically all over the news right now on um, many of his Twitter, his, his Twitter uh, feed accounts. Uh, and one of them was keep other members of the GOP off Twitter. Can we restrict them like we did Donald Trump? Jay, uh, this this uh, plethora of new leaks and audio leaks. Of, about Kevin McCarthy is is pretty revealing. What's what's your impression about what's come out in the last day or so? Well, uh, they've been spelling his name right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They, yeah. You no, know, I mean it's the old story. I mean here the guy really got caught in in, a, in the jam here. His hand in the cookie jar, making all these inconsistent statements, lying to the press. I mean, I L I E lying to the press. Um, and yet, somehow, he stands up to it. He's like a junior, a mini-me Trump. He's a mini-me Trump. Well, I mean, now has he been lying to the press, but he's been lying to Donald Trump. You know, I never, I never was going to ask him to resign. Oh, I wasn't, I wouldn't even think of that. Well, guess what? They caught him on that one. And now they're catching him on all the other stuff about um, Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and Matt Gates and the whole gaggle of them. But the bottom line is that he's still strong in the GOP. Um, he had some kind of standing ovation. Yes, yeah, standing ovation yesterday from the GOP. It means the more bad you are, the more they love you. This is part of the ethic. <laughs> so he's just trying to be bad, bad, bad in the thought that they will love him. I don't think he's coming down. I, you know, if you if you you know, you can see all kinds of commentary about it in the newspapers, but just as much as uh, they criticize him, there are those who say, well, he's you know, it's raw power. And he's managing to do that. And even Trump respects raw power. Right. Cynthia, I know you had some strong feelings about this topic. So the question is to you is, um, A, does Donald Trump accept these audio tapes as, um, as no big deal? Or is uh, he going to come out against Kevin McCarthy come time for um, when they decide who's going to be the new Speaker of the House if 
the Democrats lose the House for the midterms? I want that to be a big if. Um, I really do. But, um, well, I don't know. And we already know that Trump has come out actually since the tapes were released. And he says, well, he's come around. I admire anybody that can see the error of their ways and come back to me. I mean, those aren't his exact words, but that that's basically what he said. Yeah. If, well, he's done that many times with Rudy Giuliani and, and, and the like. Exactly. That's sort of his M.O. It shows how powerful he is, that he can turn someone from the other side to come back. You know what I mean? It makes him feel powerful that he's got that much pull. Yeah, you forgot the word grovel. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Well, now, see, I think when um, McCarthy went down to Mar-a-Lago, it wasn't to kiss the ring. It was to get their stories straight. So many GOP were in on this together, right? So after the fact, they got to figure out how to keep themselves clean from all of it. And I believe that's what that was all about. Everybody says, oh, we went down there to kiss the ring to pay homage to the king. Ah, I don't think so. I think all they did was try to get stories straight and not over Twitter or the phone or anything else where they could be recorded. They had to do it in person. And that's the only reason he went down there. And I think the reason that the GOP is staying so in step, lockstep, is because most of them were complicit. They were involved. And they know that if they're involved, they can't keep their seat. So they have to support Trump. Otherwise, they have to, to show their own guilt. And I think that's part of it. And Chuck Grassley showed his behind so bad in this one new thing that's been released where he says that he's going to be the one overseeing the counting and the uh, certifying of the votes. And we, not I, don't expect to see Pence there. We don't expect him to be there. Then they're referring to Mike Pence. I think they even say, he even said, we don't expect my Vi vice president Mike Pence to be there. Right. Well, there's a pushback on that. Yeah, they're taking. They said that was taken out of context, and it was really just towards one of the uh, one of the chambers, and that's what he was referring to, and blah blah blah. Right. So I'm surprised. They, I'm surprised they didn't say he was joking, which is their normal. <laughs> that's true. Good stuff, point. Right? Good point. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Cynthia. Hey, Jay. Uh, is Merrick Garland from the DOJ? Is he listening to these audio tapes? Is, there, is this going to give them more um, more opportunities to explore these things further? The, the first one is, uh, I, I really don't know um, what he does. Um, the second, uh, really, nobody knows what he does, because if by all indications, he doesn't do anything. Um, the, the second one is, uh, should he be? Yes. And could he? Yes. Um, I, you know, you, you hear all these stories about busts by the FBI around the country, but it's for the wrong issue. And you he, he hear all these stories about investigation and interviewing witnesses on the Trump conspiracy. Um, let's see some meat, you know, where's the meat? Does this take some of the, um, some of the fireworks out of the proposed hearings that we're gonna see in the next month or so, these audio tapes? Um, no, I think it is fireworks and it's gotta be part of the, the whole record. And, you know, what I get out of all of this, I mean, in your comments and, and what, I, what I see and read, is that we are now engaged, not in the great insurrection, which was a treasonous conspiracy among a lot of people, including those who held or who now hold public office. But that was, that was phase two. Phase three is where we're now, and that is a treasonous conspiracy to cover it up, to right. not let it get out, to not admit anything, to not let any investigation go forward. It's really extraordinary because this is just as much a treasonous conspiracy as the insurrection itself was. And it is just as much, if not more threatening uh, to our democracy to have all these Republican officials deny the truth and deny the process. It's really terrible. And I, we can never lose sight of that. And the, and the worst thing about it is it's working. 
Mm. The base believes it, or enough of them believe it, so they're getting away with it. And Congress uh, doesn't have the clout um, to enforce its own subpoenas, uh, thanks to Merrick Garland, and they're getting away with it. So this, this treasonous conspiracy is worse. Okay, Cynthia, I, I see a reaction, a subtle one at that, but a reaction. Uh, would you like to, to uh, end this topic with uh, your thoughts? Well, I agree with Jay, and I think it's absolutely sick that these people are getting away with all of this, and they are putting legislation in place in different states that will continue the same thing. We've got David Perdue, you know, out, out right saying that the 2020 election was stolen and fraudulent. And there's a lot of other um, Republican candidates right now that are saying the same thing. So if we don't hurry up, and like I was saying earlier, if we don't hurry up and do something, it's not gonna happen because we only have so much time. Granted, we might have a huge, hopefully, tidal wave of Democratic voters come out and keep this from happening. But if we don't, what are we going to do? They'll stop the commission. I, you know, they'll, I'm not the commission that, that um, the committee, committee. They'll, the special committee, they'll, they'll stop investigations, they'll stop everything. Yeah. And, and then there what goes democracy. Already. That terrifies me. Okay. Hey, we've run out of time. Jay, your last thoughts about this topic or the pre previous one? They're intertwined. Yeah. You know, these two topics are intertwined. Mm -hmm. Because uh, just as uh, Elon Musk's uh, affair here is a, a challenge to the First Amendment, <laughs> it's a challenge to the existing media. So um, query, is he going to have as much influence as the print press, as the New York Times, as the Washington Post, or more? Uh, and what, what happens in the cacophony and the chaos of the, of the Musk Twitter community? And I, that's, I think, that's probably what's going to happen. It will be chaos, and it will affect and infect the government, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and the processes we're talking about, the concerns we have about the election and all that will, will be affected by whatever happens on Twitter. And Twitter could just roll over everything we've talked about because people believe in it and they stand on the street corner and they're connected and wedded to it. And it, that's the most threatening thing of all because it changes the other threats and it could very easily make them worse. Okay, great points. Cynthia, your last words. Vote, everybody vote, vote. If you're an independent, vote. If you're a Democrat, vote. If you've never voted before in your life, register vote find out what your times are when your voting times are get ready now i realize november seems like a far away time but it's really not that far it's just right around the corner and this is you know 2020 we all said democracy's on the ballot well guess what it still is and so everybody just needs to get out and vote please good point good point particularly with us many states with the new uh, voter restrictions may require um, you know, work in advance to get either ID or whatever the case may be. Um, right. It's gonna take a lot longer in many of these states. So great point, Cynthia, great point. Okay, well, I'm gonna wrap it up because we're out of time or over time. I'd like to thank Jay Fidel and Cynthia Lee Sinclair for joining us on What Now America. Won't you please join us next Wednesday at 11 o'clock. And until then, I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and we'll see you then. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. 
You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.